Okay, well this is a uh, different video than my usual videos. If there is such a thing as a usual video, I like to post things that are normally, you know, fun to look at and possibly things that people could learn from and that are, you know, interesting or something, you know. But uh, this is not that. This is basically uh, me in my bee yard or hanging out with my bees, dealing with everyday beekeeping things like, um, you know, in this case, the sugar on top of the hive and uh, what else is going on in these photos? Okay, this is a little bird that's eating dead bees. And so it, normally this is this does goes this stuff goes nowhere. I record things on my cell phone <clears throat> and, and it's basically it's for my own records and I just play it back and just as a reminder of what I was dealing with that day or that month or whatever. And uh, but someone told me that they might actually find this sort of thing useful because it gives you an everyday, uh, example of what to expect in a bee yard in, in Newfoundland and this here these are little um, carpenters or I think they call them wood lice anyway now I'm playing back the actual video through my cell phone as I record this so I'm just gonna have to just jump the purpose oh, okay. of this video okay. is to demonstrate that quarter inch mesh over the entrances of the beehives works fine the bees can come and go easily as you can see these bees would not be out for their cleansing flights today if they weren't able to easily get out of this or walk to and from or exit from and whatever get through this quarter inch mesh okay so that was a little clip about um uh the quarter inch mesh that i put on my hives um and this is another video of just bees in the snow i guess so some of these things are it'll, it'll have me talking and some things some of these clips are just you know pictures of dead bees in the snow and whatever but it might okay and this is just another video of just i'm just testing out some things with my camera and this is back when i used to have chickens but anyway it doesn't matter um yeah so this is what it's going to be it's just it's <laughs> it's just going to be uh, a bunch of video clips of my bees now right now this is nothing but i'm gonna you're gonna hear me hold on i've noticed that the bees are all clustering above the top bars and it almost looks like most of the bees in the hive are clustering above the top bars so it's, that's usually a sign that they're starving um but it's not always but usually and I don't understand why these bees would be doing that because they're. Uh, <coughs> I have some theories, but you know, just they're just theories, just guesses. Anything else? <coughs> and I'll try to slip this in. <coughs> the bees get in the face. There's a lot of thick bees in there. Oh, there's still lots of sugar in there. Okay. Oh, okay, not as bad as I thought it was. Oh, they're okay. Yeah, let's take a look. Yeah, you can see there's a big gigantic cake of sugar and they're eating it and they're staying alive and uh, they're not happy. You can see them getting in their, their butts in the air there. They're not happy that I'm letting all the warm air out. So anyway, that's it. They're fine. Okay. so. That's my moisture quilt. They're doing okay. All right. Huh. Well, earlier, a couple days ago, I, I lifted it up and it looked like there were a lot more bees up top. And now I think I know why, because it was a mild day. And just as, the, as it warms up, the bees will go to the top of the hive. And then when, as it cools down, they'll go back down to the, the, to the lower parts of the hive. And so I think that's all that happened. So they weren't starving. They were just warm that day. Okay, good. Whew, crisis averted. <coughs> for now <coughs> this is my bee yard today there's one hive over there oh and there's a bee over there in the snow let's go take a look Just this sugar, two two little bricks of this sugar right, in there just for insurance. Oh, here they come. Oh, 
shot of this and then I'll get out. There they are. So they're getting a little testy. I'm out. But uh, that's okay. So they're doing what they've been doing all winter, which is great. Um, they've been clustering down in the bottom of the hive. And, and only recently I have, I've noticed that the thermal imaging device uh, sh shows that they're, they've been rising up. And uh, so I wasn't sure if they were getting hungry or what. But I can see they're just below the top bars, but they haven't accessed any... They haven't, they're not above the top bars, and I can still see there's plenty of honey inside the hive. So very quickly there, I, I dropped in that sugar just above where the cluster is on this side of the hive. And so if they need that sugar, they'll go up and eat it. But I think the way the things are working out, they'll just move over and eat all the honey that's over here on the, uh, the left side of the hive. But if you listen... That's the sound of uh, a lot of bees uh, not in a good mood. And so this is great though. So it, it, that's, that's not really a great thing to bother them like this in the winter time. It riles them up. They, they, get, they burn through more honey while they're angry like this. So it's not, it takes them a while to calm down and it can take them as, as, as long as up to, up to two weeks to just, you know, relax again. So the less disturbances they have in the winter time or any time of the year, the better it is. Uh, but especially in the winter when they really need all that honey and you don't want them eating that honey and getting all, you know, angry and hungry, I guess. Uh, so that's good. They've got plenty of honey and, uh, and plenty of sugar and I probably will not need to touch this hive until the spring. That's my theory anyway. So I'm happy with that. All right. The other tricky thing about this hive is the this, this moisture quilt. There's a lot of cracks. It doesn't. It's not a perfect. Whoop, it's not a perfect seam there. And it's not a huge deal because it just provides some extra ventilation. But uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to. I think I'll seal that up anyway. But uh, yeah, so they're okay. They're, they don't get much sunlight, so that's always been my concern about them. But it's interesting that the hive that has that's the that gets the least amount of sun is the hive that has eaten the least amount of honey this winter. Because all my other hives, the bees and all most of my other hives, except for that one, which also doesn't get much sun, are definitely above the the top bars. They're 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 eating sugar. They're, they have honey, but they're eating they're above the top bars and they're eating sugar. So those guys are in the sun. So it's interesting because. You know, my thought was that this hive should probably get moved uh, into the sunlight so that in the winter time they have more sun and they, get, they warm up in the sunnier days. But maybe it's fine. Maybe, you know, this, this staying in the cool spot keeps them cool. And as long as they have plenty of honey, they'll slowly eat through their honey and everything will be fine. I don't know. We'll find out uh, in the spring. Um, if that's the case, then maybe I'll just keep it here. But uh, my plan was in the spring, the first ex inspection of this hive, I was going to pick it up and just move it to a sunnier spot. So I don't know if I'll do that now, but we'll see. Um, the other interesting thing to note about this hive is um, <clears throat> in this particular location, um, this is the second hive I've had in this, this location, and each colony was, um, the, the bees were as nice as could be, really friendly, extremely docile. I didn't it just as good as, as good as it gets, and then around September, when the sun they start getting less sun and and and, and, and less nectar and everything else, and and and, and it, their days get cooler because they're in more in the shade because of their location in this particular hive or particular bee yard, um, they just turn nasty overnight. They 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 just turn get into a really bad mood, and you can see they get very defensive very quickly, and they've been like this since the fall, and. Um, so I thought, okay, well, this is no good. If they're, if they're just going to, you know, there must be something about this location that the bees don't like that turns their mood instantly from nice to not nice. And I thought it was because they're in the shade. But, so that's not great, but um, I don't need to mess around with the bees that much in the, in the fall and the winter anyway. So even if they are in a bad mood, who cares? And if being in the shade gives them... 
uh, more honey in the winter if they, they if it means they're going to eat through their honey sl more slowly in the winter and last longer and I don't really need to feed them like this. I don't think I need that sugar. Then hey, maybe this is actually a good thing. So anyway, these are the the massive things that I ponder over. Anyway. And that's a pretty good example of what you're going to get on this this uh, these cell phone videos, these clips. It's just me trying to figure things out, sometimes getting it wrong. I don't always agree with everything I say in re retrospect. Like, I don't... Okay, Okay. this is a, uh, a candy cake. 12 parts sugar, 1 part water. And this was dried inside a um, just a tin pie pan. And you can see it's a nice solid... brick of sugar. And I'm going to try to slide it in this hive today. Or maybe the other hive. I can't remember which one needs the, which one needs the sugar. There it is right there. The big round cake. And there they are. And there's a little bit of sugar over from the last cake that they ate. Now they're going over it. That's it. I don't really know if they're... I thought they had plenty of, sh of honey in this hive. So I don't know if they're eating that sugar or if they're discarding the sugar, or if they're eating the sugar even though they have honey, because I think that does happen. They get distracted by the sugar and they will eat the sugar instead of the honey that they have in the hive. But um, we'll find out in the spring when I look at the bottom board, and if it's just nothing but piles of dry sugar down there, then I know they weren't eating it. And the bees in this hive are now acting like they're a little bit defensive because I just slipped the uh, sugar brick in there. And that's all it takes to get them defensive, get them on the go, which is a good sign. If they're defensive, then they, they usually have something to defend, like a queen. And this hive, which I just tried to... Uh... Now you can see these bees are just listen to them. They're all, that's, that's the sound of a defensive hive. They're not happy. Because I lifted up the top and I, I rattled the hive. I, I, they felt the vibrations like a big bear was going to attack them. So now they're just, uh, they're feeling a little defensive. So I'm just going to leave them alone. And maybe they come back next week and maybe on a cooler day because it's, it's only about zero degrees today and so they're, they're going to be more active anyway because it's, it's warm uh, but maybe on a cooler day when they're more clustered in the hive and they're not, they're not, they don't have the warmth to move or get def too defensive so I'll just slip open the hive, slip it in and, and then that'll be it but yeah, they're not uh, these, are, uh, these, are on, these bees are on guard now And that high pitch frequency that you heard there, that was, uh, those were birds. Uh, I just had another thought. I just had a thought about um, uh, one way to make these sugar cakes. I know some people uh, complain that any kind of dry granulated sugar added to the hive in the wintertime doesn't do anything. The bees just discard it like it's, like it's debris. But um, perhaps if you added a little bit of anise extract or some sort of essential oil or something that the bees already associate with with food you know sugar syrup or anise definitely anise um, if they associate it with food maybe they won't discard it they'll say oh hey this smells like food this smells like something that you know or maybe even mix a little bit of honey in there with the uh, uh, with it with the water when you're mixing the, uh, the the candy cake something that just makes them associate realize oh this is food not just some white stuff that's that they need to clean out of the hive just thought yeah I put um, honey in all of my uh, sugar cakes these days uh, whenever I'm mixing up I just put in at least a, just a, like a teaspoon or a tablespoon just enough so it looks and smells a bit more like honey all right what we have here is a uh, an excellent example of the bees getting out for some cleansing flights. It's uh, November, not November. It's uh, whoops, it's January, <laughs> January nineteenth, uh, twenty seventeen, here in, uh, in Flat Rock, Newfoundland, 
It's about 1 p.m. and it's uh, it's a little over zero degrees Celsius. Uh, we have plenty of snow on the ground and we've got a big snowstorm coming our way. And uh, it's been a fairly cold winter. And uh, but this is the most activity I've seen from this hive this winter um, because it's probably the sunniest day they've had combined with the warmest day they've had so far since I don't know since December probably and uh, you can see here they're they're coming and going from this uh, quarter inch mesh that I have on the top entrance and they're not it's not a problem they're they're freely coming and going. It's not blocking them or anything like that. It's it's working fine. You can see they're just they're not having any problem with that. And uh, down here, I, I cleared out the bottom entrance a little bit, and you can see they're sort of yeah. There you go. There's a bee just walking through right now. So it's not a the quarter inch mesh to keep the shrews out is uh, is not a problem. I think I'll just stick with that for now on. And this is the typical thing we're going to get on these videos. Um, just little clips and things, me fooling around with the bees. So we had a little bit of snow. And uh, that's my chicken coop, Hobo Junction, down there. And uh, yeah, this is a bit of the snow we've had. I think it's about 50 centimeters. And this hive up here, sort of on a hill here. And there's all this uh, big snowbank behind it. And uh, that's new. That didn't happen last year. But I think what happened is the, the wind was blowing very strongly through the trees out here. There's a little small clearing right here. And I just, I don't know, maybe, I guess that's how it worked. And I guess it just blew down here and created a snow drift. And this here spot where this hive is, Probably would have been covered up too if this if the hive wasn't there as you can see <coughs> Down there. This is a three deep hive and the bottom deep is buried right there and uh, You can see this the snow, you know, the wind just blows around the hive and it creates a natural donut around the, uh, the moat of snow around the hives <coughs> And that's, a, that's also a 3D hive, and the bottom deep is pretty much buried. Yeah, so there's a the snowbank. Just this, pretty much the same height as that high, hive up there, so it's a fair bit of snow. So this is uh, my continuing saga of... Um, oh, here we go, here's a bee coming out. It's... Um, it's about minus 12, and about probably minus 17 with the wind today. That's in Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, but it's very cold. <clears throat> Yet, the bees are warmed up enough from the sun shining on the hive. And uh, I think the, the heat is coming from that dark super on the bottom. This is a three deep hive and the, the bottom deep is completely buried in snow, but so it's just enough radiant heat from the sun heating up that dark green deep in the middle and that heat rising up and hitting the cluster and uh, they're getting out for some what they think are probably cleansing flights, but they're more likely to be death flights. They're not, uh, they're, if they go flying for much more than a minute, they're going to freeze to death. But uh, Anyhow, I think it's just an example of um, of this experiment that I've uh, had on the go for, well, like probably pretty much since I've been beekeeping, which is my my wrapping or not wrapping of the hives and the color of the hives and the location of the hives in the winter and all this all these factors that go into um, the survival of the bees over the winter or the wintering practices, uh, at least where I live. And um, and I think I've come to the conclusion, now this winter isn't finished yet, and this is still an experimental winter, but right now I'm leaning towards <coughs> wrapping isn't absolutely necessary. Um, I, like everything, I think it, it all depends on the conditions of the, the environment that the bees are being kept in. This hive in particular, 
is <clears throat> it's in an area where you can see it's surrounded by trees and these trees provide a lot of shelter from any strong winds uh, on windy days when it's gusting you know 100 kilometers an hour or more you can see the top of the trees will, will shake a bit but you come down here and it's as calm as anything and uh, most of the time even on the windiest days depending on the direction of the wind it's usually pretty calm down here there's there's obviously the where I come into the hive or come into my bee yard which is right here that's a little clearing there you can't see it completely but that's where the wind blows through here's a quick note about um, hives that have uh, uh, wrap on them I've noticed that um, even on cold days when the Sun hits the hives with the black wrap the bees warm up and they come out for cleansing flights because it's warm in the hive and to the bees it's it's a signal that it's warm outside as well so they just leave the hive thinking okay everything's cool let's go out and have a cleansing flight and then they're shocked literally to death when they fly out and notice that uh, it's not warm outside it's minus 10 degrees Celsius and they freeze instantly and so I've noticed around my hives, particularly this hive and another couple other hives that I have that are wrapped, when the bees are warmed up by the wrap, by the sun shining on the wrap, and they come out and they're active, they just come out and die. They come out and die. Now, this isn't catastrophic, but I mean, they're getting their cleansing flights, but they're also dying during their cleansing flights as well and uh, it, it's not as noticeable in my hives that aren't wrapped. It's like here's, here's another hive with just as many bees as far as I know and it's not wrapped and there are a few dead bees in front of it but you can see here that most of the dead, dead bees came out of the wrapped hive. I don't know if that's a thing, don't know if that's a common thing or if it's just there could be other factors at play here but I've so far this winter that's a pattern I've noticed. There's the, the a lot of dead bees out front of the wrapped hives. Warming up, they think it's warm, and it isn't. They come outside and die from the cold. Okay, and that's it. Uh, so this is a typical kind of thing. Um, this, this video happened to be 23 minutes long, but um, future videos for future months of my beekeeping could be anywhere from 10 minutes to an hour, who knows, whatever you know, uh, might work for uh, the casual viewer who wants to just sort of, uh, well, actually it's probably not a casual viewer, it's probably the dedicated viewer who, who's who got a couple hives and they're doing their thing and they just want to get a real life view of what's actually happening in, in their bee yard or in a bee yard and what they might have to contend with and a little details that just don't come up in uh, 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 normal videos, I suppose, because... Um, I find that uh, a lot of the beekeeping videos that I watch, and I watch a lot of them, and I have watched, I continue to watch a lot of them, um, some of the be ones that I get the most of, most from, are from beekeepers just moseying, just doing stuff in their yard, sort of like I'm doing the, in these videos, and they're just talking about stuff, and or you just see little details that just like, oh, look, the honey super goes on this way, or the feeder goes on like that, or there's little cracks in the hive on the side of the thing where the, there's ventilation, and oh, do you put duct tape on that, those cracks and little just all kinds of little itsy bitsy things that you sort of it's easy to overlook them when I'm sort of presenting them in, an, in a real video that I'm going to post um, and uh, I try not to overlook those those details but uh, sometimes they get away from me